In Privacy Watch, there are growing concerns around the safety of election systems in the U.S. Over the weekend at the hacking convention, DEF CON, an 11-year-old, was able to hack into a replica of Florida's election site. It took him only 10 minutes to get into the reporting system and alter voting results on the web page. CNET senior producer Dan Patterson just got back from the Black Hat hacking convention in Las Vegas. He joins us now to discuss the latest election security threats. Dan, thanks so much for being here. Good to be here. So could the type of attack like that one deployed by DEF CON actually happen in real elections? Oh yeah, this is very trivial. Hacking and attacking a website and the databases that power the website is almost trivial. So an 11 year old did this and at DEF CON and Black Hat they said, look, if we gave this to an adult, they might kind of laugh at us. These are called SQL injection. You don't really need to know how a SQL injection attack works. But if you think about a spreadsheet, just like your Microsoft Excel, websites are powered by very similar technology and by injecting different types of data into the spreadsheet, you can make different results populate on a website. It's just so hard to comprehend that an 11-year-old could do that. Um, what about voting machines when we think about them? We think, oh, they must be secure, but are they particularly vulnerable to hacking? So election machines are computers, so mm -hmm. they are definitely very vulnerable. However, we should not focus too much on election machines because they are difficult to access at large scale. Now, at Black Hat, they show remote access, just like your work computer might have remote access software on them. Many of these election machines, voting machines, do have remote access on them. But for the most part, in order to hack a voting machine, you need physical access. So to be able to put a USB key in or to do some sort of typing interface with that device. So yes, they're very vulnerable. No, it's hard to do at large scale. Hmm. All right. Well, how widespread could this problem be potentially? Uh, incredibly widespread. Mm -hmm. But again, it's hard to hack election machines at large scale. But you don't really need to do that in order to flip one district right. or five districts. Some of these are really competitive. Exactly. And the best attacks are targeted attacks. Right. Well, uh, when you look at the critical infrastructure, that's something that people talk a lot about when they talk about hacks. How could hacks on critical infrastructure actually then pose a security threat in upcoming elections? So when we talk about critical infrastructure, what we're talking about is water systems, mm -hmm. electrical grids, maybe the uh, uh, traffic signal lights. So you may think, well, this doesn't have anything to do with an election sure. system. However, what we see now is this fermenting of distrust. So experts told me repeatedly that if you hack systems before an election, you could kind of get the voters riled up. Okay, that's one scenario. The other scenario is higher stakes. It's less likely, but higher stakes. And that is a piece of ransomware or malware attacking, say, Atlanta or another city that uh, is particularly vulnerable and taking entire voting blocks offline. And the big problem with this is attribution. It's hard to tell, was this ransomware random and did it simply happen to happen on election day? Mm -hmm. Or was this a targeted attack? And so what many experts in cybersecurity fear is a 9-11 style event. So something that hits critical infrastructure and because this is infrastructure, this means lives and property are at stake. Now, it could be something that it lives in the realm of theoretical, but we see what's happening in Ukraine, Venezuela, Sri Lanka, other places. It's already happened. It's already happening. And that's the big key takeaway, that these types of attacks, although they're maybe theoretical here in the United States, they are happening all the time around the rest of the world. And we should anticipate them, if not in 2018, in future elections. Uh, a frightening prospect. Dan Patterson, thanks so much, Dan. Good to see you.